everyone. My name is Natalie Casanova Morales. First, I want to thank to Denise and the organization of the Women in Quantum for this amazing opportunity. Today, I am going to talk about my experience in experimental and quantum physics. Let's start quantum from the south. What is the reason for this title? Well, because I'm from the South, specifically I'm from Chile. I was born in the south of Chile in Concepcion City. That is 600 kilometers at north of, uh, from Antarctica. Actually, I live in the capital, Santiago City, from where I tell you my history today. When I finished high school, I was 17 years old for my future. I had many interests, mathematics, physics, art, dance, and biology. But which career have all these interests together? Which path should I take? Okay, the next sentence represents my choice. We especially need imagination in science. It is not all mathematics, nor all logic, but it is somewhat beauty and poetry. Maria Mitchell, American astronomer. I choose a science career because for me, science and art always are connected. I choose <coughs> excuse me, uh, physics engineering in the University of Santiago de Chile. I have studied physics and engineering for six years, but do you remember that I was interested in biology? At the beginning of my research, I had the possibility of merging these areas, physics and biology. I took the tools of physics and applied them in biology. For example, I studied the migration of cancer cells in presence of one protein, and without this protein, I studied the trajectories in the time also, I study the mechanical response for new read. It's like a neuron because have an axon. And when I put this axon under a laminar flow, can I measure the mechanical response that this structure? It was necessary for all this experiment that I learned how to grow cells. And this made me a very particular person in physics. My transformation has already started at this point. <laughs> like Hamilton, I am not thrown away my shot. My first shot in my career is biophysics. Later, and because I had already developed some skill in biology, I was offering to do my PhD in France. I went to the south of France, to Montpellier, to do my PhD in physics related to biophysics. I study the malaria, the movement of the malaria parasite, but what is malaria? Malaria is a disease caused by a parasite injected by a mosquito. This parasite migrates very fast, your liver, then it changes the state. The name is meroso merosoid. It's very small, one micrometers, and this parasite can invade your blood. When go to your blood, this parasite uh, invade your red blood cells and reproduce 25 parasites approximately. Each parasite can invade an other red blood cells. Here I show you the video of my thesis. Here, this is a red blood cells with, with 25 parasites inside. And uh, also I show you the movement of the one parasite uh, in the, close to the red blood cells. The movement is very important to invade the red blood cells. I discovered different drugs to stop the movement that allow to parasite to enter the red blood cells. When I finished my PhD, I have returned to Chile to develop my career in biophysics. In Chile, I've changed the scale of the work in I focusing. I went from the study a work with the size of cells to a smaller work with the size of proteins. 
from the micrometer board to nanometer board. As part of this journey, that I want to comment quickly is two related postdocs I, I did. I did. The first one in biochemistry at the University of Chile, where I study the mechanical properties and important protein for the human body called BIP, immunoglobulin binding protein, which in simple words allows different things to enter into the cells. This protein is related uh, to the transport of the protein across the membrane of the endoplasmatic reticulum. I start, start by studying the protein alone using single molecule technique in a device called optical tweezer, seeking to understand its mechanical properties. Then I went to UCLA to study the same protein, the same object, but this time I study, not, not alone, I study um, this protein in cluster or, or in multiple. This device, uh, the name is nanorheometer, that allow to measure force on a small scale for this protein. We propose a model for the mechanical response of this protein in presence of different ligands. Why I tell you this story? Because nobody knows who she's worked for, because the relationship between this protein and the coronavirus was recently found. BIP is the responsible of the coronavirus getting a stick to the cells. This is the reason my work take uh, a different direction than uh, give it at the beginning. It's not unusual in science, and it's really exciting the way new paths can appear. While you researching, you never know which application can appear. Finally, let me uh, tell you my history with quantum. <laughs> now, yes. Uh, in the postdoctorate I did at the Catholic University, we developed sensors related to the area of biomedicine. And this is my confession. confession. I confess that at the beginning, I had a quantum mechanic as an undergrad course. It seemed me nice, but very theoretical. Even if it was nice, I thought, <laughs> I will never see an application in my experimental work. To be really honest, what I thought was the quantum did not work on the real life experiment. <laughs> That's it. That is my truth. Years later, during this postdoc, I was responsible for developing a sensor for Alzheimer's disease that used the quantum principles. I want to die. My expression at this time is like the painting uh, the screen, like this. Oh. Let me explain about the sensor. It's composed of color center. These are defects in the diamond network. I, de I diamond network looks like if the uh, image is a net of order and compact carbon. If you put, put nitrogen instead of carbon, one space is generated. And that space, we have, we have like a qubit that you can control its spin. Of course, it's a candidate and um, it's a qubit candidate. Here we took the nano diamond particles with the color center inside and we functionalize them. We stick a peptide that detects the beta amyloid peptide related to the Alzheimer's. Then by injected to the sick rat and we detect these nano diamonds in the brain of this rat. At first, we used them as markers, but in the later stage, stage of this project, 
we hope to be able to measure signal from this qubit directly. Of course, I didn't do all this investigation by myself. Always I've been a part of a great team that I have to thank before continuing my presentation. 34 people important for me. Oh, thank you guys. Okay, one second. Let me take my tea. Now I want to tell you about what provoked on me to be working in quantum. I understand that is an important technology in development. Also, I realize that maybe many people think like me at the beginning. I took in my hands the responsibility of transmitting this knowledge to all the people of my country who were a little interest. In those moments, I found out the IEM had opened the quantum programming to all the people who was interested on it. The academics in the group were Alec and Andres Concha and Ariel Norambuena and I. IBMers from Chile, Pierre Curoto, and Juan Pablo Soto, we create the event called Chile Computer. This experience was well received and allowed us to face a greater challenge. So we prepare a course for high school students. <clears throat> that was the best experience of outreach that I've ever had. 